Prisoner B-3087, Krakow, Poland, 1939 to 1942. Chapter 1. If I had known what the next six years of my life were going to be like, I would have eaten more. I wouldn't have complained about brushing my teeth or taking a bath or going to bed at eight o'clock every night. I would have played more, laughed more. I would have hugged my parents and told them I loved them. But I was ten years old and I had no idea of the nightmare that was to come. None of us did. It was the beginning of September and we all sat around the big table in the dining room in my family's flat on Krakow Street, eating and drinking and talking. My parents, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, and me, Jakob, although everyone called me by my Polish name, Janek. The Jews must disappear from Europe, that's all what Hitler said, Uncle Mosh said, reaching for another pastry. I don't know how much more clear he could be. I shivered. I'd heard Hitler, the German Freiherr, giving speeches on the radio. Freiherr meant leader in German. It was what the Germans call the president now. Hitler was always talking about the Jewish menace, and how Germany and the rest of Europe should be Jew-free. I was a Jew. I lived in Europe, and I didn't want to disappear. I loved my house and my city. The British and the French have already declared war on him, my father said. Soon the Americans will join them. They won't let Germany rule over all of Europe. He's already annexed Austria and Czechoslovakia, said Uncle Abraham, and now he invades Poland. My father sipped his coffee. Mark my words, this war won't last more than six months. My uncles argued with him, but he was my father, so I believed him. Enough politics, my mother said. She got up to clear the table, and my aunts helped her. Yannick, why don't you go put on a show for us? He built his own projector. I ran to my room to get it. It wasn't a film projector like the one at the movie theater. It was a slide projector I made by mounting a light bulb on a piece of wood and positioning wooden plates with lenses for magnifying glasses in front of it. I could show pictures on the wall or do shadow puppet shows. My cousins helped me hang a white sheet in the doorway of the sitting room, and when everyone was seated, I plugged in the projector and clicked on the radio. I liked to have musical accompaniment, like a movie soundtrack. When the radio warmed up, I found a Count Bassey song that was perfect and started my show. Using cardboard cutouts of cowboys, Indians, and stagecoaches and horses I glued to sticks, I projected a show about a sheriff in the American Wild West who had to project his own town from bandits. John Wayne Westerns were my favorite films, and I took all the parts from his movies and made them into one big story. My family laughed and cheered and called out to the characters like they were real. They loved my shows, and I loved putting them on for them. I was never prouder than when I got my father to laugh. Maybe one day I would go to America and work in the movies. Aunt Gazela would often ruffle my wavy hair and say, You look like a movie star, Yannick, with your dark blonde hair and big eyes. I was just getting to the part where the bandit leader robbed the town bank and was squaring off for a shootout with the hero when the music on the radio stopped mid-song. At first I thought the radio's vacuum tube had blown, but then a man's voice came on the radio. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this broadcast with news that the Germany army has reached Krakow. No, my father said. So soon, Uncle Moshi said. It's only been six days. Where's the Polish army? I came out from behind the sheet in the doorway to listen, while the radio announcer talked about Polish forces withdrawing to Lozd in Warsaw. There was a big boom, and my mother's teacups rattled in their saucers. My cousins and I ran to the window to look outside. Dark smoke curled into the sky over the rooftops of Podgors, our neighbors. Someone cried out on the next street, and the church bells of Wawel Cathedral rang out an alarm. It was too late. The Germans were here. If I had only known then what I know now, I would have run. I wouldn't have stopped to pack a bag, or say goodbye to my friends, or even unplug my projector. None of us would have. We would have run to the woods outside of town and never looked back. But we didn't. We just sat there in my family's flat, listening to the radio and watching the sky over us. Krakow turned black and the Germans came to kill us.